Hello, welcome to Tuesday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic. And one of the puzzles that we've featured recently on the channel that actually has garnered a lot of positive uh, feedback was the Pentominus puzzle. Um, we did a couple of these in a video about three weeks ago. And generally the comments were really, really positive. And you did ask to see more of them. Well, that is lucky because two things happened off the back of that Pentominus video. Uh, the first was that I had an email from Grant Fikes. Now, Grant invented the Pentominus puzzle, and he pointed me in the direction of the puzzle on the screen now, which uh, was voted one of the very best puzzles for 2019 on gmpuzzles.com, which means, frankly, it's about as good as a puzzle gets. Um, so we're going to have a go at this in today's video. Now, the other thing that happened was none other than Ard van der Vettering constructed a pentominous puzzle as well and he has sent that over to us here and if again if if, if the feedback suggests um, that these things are popular then either Mark or I will do a video of Ard's puzzle as well. Now Ard of course is famous for being uh, the man behind the puzzle that got uh, 4 million views. I think it's up to 4 million views now for one of our videos. So he uh, he needs no introduction. Um, but yeah, he's, he's also now venturing into the world of creating uh, pencil puzzles, which is rather marvellous. Um, now, what are the rules of pentominous puzzles? Well, one of the beauties, I think, about this puzzle is its rule set is incredibly simple. Basically, what we have to do is to populate all of the white cells in this grid with um, five cell uh, constructed shapes. So what I mean by that is they have to be five orthogonally connected cells and they can be, you know, you, there are 12 different uh, ways of constructing uh, five cells and you, you can use our software actually, it works very nicely to draw them into the grid. Now, the only other rule, apart from we have to populate this with five cell regions, is that two regions of the same uh, type cannot appear orthogonally connected so what and that so if we had an l-shaped region here it would not be possible for this for example let's actually let's color that in if this was an l-shaped region we couldn't have that connected to it because this although it's a, a reflection is still considered an L-shaped region. And as it's touching orthogonally, this L-shaped region, that would not be allowed. Similarly, if we try and put that shape in, that would not be allowed. But again, it's an L-shaped region that's touching another L-shaped region. So this is what our, we're tasked with doing. As I say, this is one of the very best puzzles from 2019, so it should be awesome. Do have a go at it. Uh, to play the puzzle, you click on the link under the video. And with that, let's get cracking. Now, you'll have realized I'm on my laptop again today, um, but the sound quality does seem to have held up. Um, so I'm pleased about that. And hopefully the video, uh, well, I, I know the puzzle quality is still as high as it always is on Cracking the Cryptic. And I just hope that the sort of audio experience is not uh, impinging on people's enjoyment at all. Now, you can see I'm sort of floating around the grid. I've got no idea how to start this puzzle. Uh, so I'm just trying to find sort of domino situations, cul-de-sacs, I suppose, is a good way of describing them, where I can definitely lock two cells into the same pentomino. Uh, and I'm running out of these now, so we're going to have to... We're going to have to think about something else. Ah, yeah, okay, let's look at this domino. That's an interesting domino. Because is it possible that this domino is, is part of two different pentominoes? And the answer is no, because if this was two different pentominoes, we'd have one pentomino that would have to come out like this, and then this pentomino wouldn't have enough room. These borders in the grid have to delineate between pentominoes, uh, well, different pentominoes. So I can't just claim this is a pentomino because this border here needs to divide two pentominoes. So what all of that means is that this is part of a single pentomino, but that's in and of itself. <laughs> Can we do anything with that? Um, Well, actually, we can do one more cell. Look, it's not possible for this cell to not be part of the grey region because let's let's just draw that in. If this is part of a different pentomino, 
Now again, this grey region has to reach this cell where it's meant to be divided, so that's not going to work. So let's, we can actually label this cell as grey as well. Uh, but now a problem here is that we're running out of, we're running out of things that can reduce our degrees of freedom. We still have too many options now for this gray region. You know, it could take that cell, it could come down and be a W, it could, it could even bend round and be a U. Um, right, that's no use. Where else can we look? Um, wow. Down at the bottom is this humpy region. Is that what well, one thing I can see about the humpy region here is that it can't. It's quite an interesting region actually because it can't have a p pentomino in it. Because if we try and put a p pentomino there, what on earth do we put here? Well, it can only be another p pentomino, and obviously we can't have p pentominoes touching. Oops. Um, Oopsie, let's get, get back to there. And similarly, obviously, we can just by reflection rule out that arrangement of a p-pentomino. So what does... What does... So let's try this trick again. If these two are in the same region, what does that region have to look like? Ah... Now that is interesting. That is interesting. If these are part of the same region, how can we draw a pentomino in here that is not a p-pentomino? <laughs> well, one option would be we could try an, an uh, n-pentomino like that. That would be one option. But you can see that breaks because now how do we fill in this white space? These three squares have to be part of the same pentomino. And this domino here, we can't isolate it. It's got to be connected to a pentomino somehow. So we can't, for example, take these three squares and then another square, because that's going to isolate at least one square up here. So the only option is to put in another n pentomino. That is weird. That is weird. So let me just, let's just have another stare at this. Is there another arrangement? So if we come the other way, no, it's going to be the same, isn't it? Of course. So, in fact, these this domino here has to have different pentominoes in it. So that one must come down and then it's going to have to turn right because this one's going to have to turn left. This one's got to come to here. But it can, and now we can't isolate this domino. So it, this one is a U pentomino. Ah, oh, that dis disambiguates this pentomino, look. This pentomino can't be a U pentomino now, because that's a U pentomino, so this has to be an L pentomino. And presumably, yeah, this is the same. So this one also has to be an L pentomino, because we can't allow it to be a U pentomino. So now... Oh! Now this one has to be, look at this, this propagates. So we've got an L pentomino here. This pentomino, we can see the first four cells of it are forced. Remember, we can't, we can't have this in the same pentomino as this cell. So we know that this must bend round and take this cell. And now it has an option. It can either go up one more, but that would connect an L pentomino and an L pentomino, or it bends round and becomes another U pentomino. And and now it does it again. That's got to be an L pentomino now. This one. Ah, now that's interesting. This now can't be a U pentomino, obviously, but it also can't be an L pentomino because that would connect it to this one. So this has to be an I pentomino. Um, now, what do we do up here? So this... Well, this has to be a p-pentomino, doesn't it? Because otherwise, in effect, there's just one exit from this region. If we look at this region, 
this cell is the only exit from these five squares. So it's not possible for there to be two pentominoes in this top region because there would have to be two exits from this region and there isn't. And we can't have the p pentomino that way round because that would isolate this square. So I'm pretty comfortable. I think that has to be a p pentomino like this. So maybe this is now helping with this region. Oh, well, it is a bit, isn't it? Now, if this grey region can't be a p pentomino, it can't do that. It can't do that. And it can't isolate squares, so it can't be a W pentomino. So this... This simply cannot take this square. That's fascinating, isn't it? This yellow square just cannot be part of this grey pentomino, because the, the fifth square, if we make this, or we turn this into a 2 by 2 region, the fifth square axiomatically will be a p pentomino, which is not what we can, and it will connect. So this square is not in, and we mustn't isolate this square, so this square is grey, and we mustn't isolate this square, so this square can't be grey. Good grief. So actually through logic, and this is one of the lovely things about good pentominous puzzles, and obviously Grant being the inventor is uh, well versed in how to set good pentominous puzzles. They are logical. They don't require guessing. Um, now, some people I think can solve them faster by guessing, but obviously I won't do that because I don't like guessing. Um, right, so we've now got a Z pentomino there and a forced L pentomino over the top, which I'll make blue. This pentomino now has to... Oh, we've, oh, we've got this, this LU thing going on again now. This can't be an L pentomino. So this has to be another U pentomino. I can't keep it being light blue, so I'm going to have to keep it being red, I think. And that and now that one can't be a U pentomino, so that's another L pentomino again. So somehow I've switched the colourings of my L's and uh, U's round as we've gone round the perimeter, but I couldn't help that. Well, I probably could have helped it, but I didn't realise it was going to happen. So this square, now this square. So they are they're, these two are green. This mustn't be an L pentomino, so it doesn't take that. It can't be a U pentomino because that would isolate this. So that's a Z pentomino. That forces this to be a Y pentomino, otherwise we isolate cells. Those squares have got to be the same. We don't know what they are. These are in a different pentomino, so I should label those a different colour. That forces this one out. This mustn't be an L pentomino. It mustn't be a Z pentomino. Both of those are obviously touching this purple region already, so this has to be a U pentomino again. These two squares are isolated, so this grey one has to be a T pentomino. Is that the first appearance we've had of a T? I think it is. Uh, this is now part of a different pentomino. Quite interesting though, look at this uh, blue region and this purple region. If I connect these together in a Z pentomino, this white region here will also have to be a Z pentomino. So this, it's good that these are different colours, these are not the same uh, pentomino. So, they are not the same pentomino. Ah, right, so let's think about the purple then. The purple can take this square as a maximum before it has to look for additional squares on the left-hand side. And any square it takes on the left-hand side, apart from this one, isolates this domino. So this domino has to be part of the purple pentomino, otherwise there is a problem. So this could be an F pentomino or a P pentomino. If it's an F pentomino, 
No, no, it can't be an F pentomino because if it's an F pentomino, what do, what does this pentomino become? Well, it's another F pentomino. I mean, it's sort of twisted round, but it's still an F pentomino. So this is not this is not taking this square. So it must take that one. That becomes a P. This one now. Ah, this is interesting. Look at these borders. They are preventing this from turning this way or this way. So this is another T pentomino. Let's put that in. Uh, I'm not sure about this one. Obviously, it can't be a P pentomino, but it could be an N, could be an L, could be an that uh, couldn't be an N like, oh no, it could perhaps be an N like that if that was an L. Don't know. Not sure about that 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 uh, light blue one. I think the times suggested for this were an expert time for this puzzle was about 22 minutes. So um, grandmaster time was still around eight minutes. So this is a this is a properly difficult puzzle. Probably should have said that at the beginning. Ah, one trick you can sometimes do with pentomino puzzles is to look at cul-de-sacs like this. Because those two have got to be part of the same pentomino. But if we look at this region down here, in fact, I should make that a different color so it's a bit more visible. Um, we've got, in effect, an 11 cell region here populated by those cells that I've just highlighted with the cursor. Now, there's only one entrance into this region. Look, this, this entrance is the only way of getting into it. So that means that I have to, in effect, ensure that whatever pentomino pokes into this region, it leaves enough space um, for things to be divisible by five. So given that these two pentominoes are definitely in this area at the bottom, we, we actually know that there must be a pentomino sticking in just one cell. Because anything more than that is going to give us a problem. If we try and stick you know, a pentomino in that takes four cells, for example, from this 11 cell region, we need a seven cell pentomino which by definition isn't going to work so there's a pentomino that sticks down into this region I'll make it uh, gray I think and it takes exactly one cell in order to leave behind 10 cells that I can divide up somehow between the green and the red so this square is going to have to be red this square is going to have to be green because the red can't reach it now this can't be reached by the green anymore. Ah, now look. <laughs> so we've now got to avoid 2F pentomino. So if I make this red, the green would have to take this square and we'd have two um, F pentominoes joining together. So this is lovely. So we have to we have to make that an X and that a T. Okay. Uh, now I'm getting a bit stuck here, which is always a worry with these puzzles. Um, this region though, yeah, th this is a bit like up here. There's only one exit. This square it sort of acts as a barrier between these three squares and the rest of the grid. So those four squares have to be part of the same pentomino. Therefore, it's a two by two region. So this is a P pent. Ah, yeah, okay. This is a P pentomino. We don't quite know at this point whether it's taking this square or this square, but it's not too hard to see if it takes this square, what now happens to this region? Well, that has to be a P pentomino by exactly the same logic. And it doesn't matter which P pentomino it is, it's connected to this P pentomino. So this little square here, mustn't be a P pentomino. We must allow something. We can't have this square being part of that. So now those two squares are part of the same region. And again, we've got to be really careful here. 
not we can't have this as a p pentomino it could be a u ah but we can yeah here's a here's a little bit of logic let's look at this cell now whatever pentomino this cell is part of if it doesn't take this square what pentomino will it be part of well it'll have to come this way and where will it then go well it can't it can't lock off squares so it can't do something like that because this is going to isolate this square so the only pento if this square does not go upwards the only pentomino it can form is that pentomino and that is a p-pentomino that is connected to another p-pentomino. So these two squares have to be, oh, I'll make them a different color actually, I'll make them green. These two squares have to be part of a single pentomino. And this square, now, ah, this is interesting. Now this square is not part of the green pentomino. So, and we can't have that shape because that would isolate this square. So this, this must go up again. Oh, uh, have I broken this? Am I going to be forcing a P pentomino for the reds? No. Oh, uh, no, I can get it out. Just, I can do that. That's the only way of getting this red one out without making a P pentomino now. So it must do that. This must be green. Um, so we've made an N pentomino here. This is going to be a T or a Y pentomino. I don't think we know which yet. This is now going to be a P pentomino, but we, again, we don't know whether it's taking this square or this square. It took this square. I'm not sure. This one must come up to here. this is not part of the light blue region and this mustn't form another n pentomino look because it's just it would be sat on top of another n pentomino and it mustn't isolate squares so this has got to come up again so is this an i pentomino Oh no, it's not an I pentomino, because if this is an I pentomino, this would have to be an M pentomino and it would connect to this. So in order to not isolate a square, this is an L pentomino. These squares now have to be part of the same pentomino. And it mustn't... Yeah, it mustn't be an M pentomino, so that's a W pentomino. And... Ah, now look, we have a we have a resolution for what this is. If this doesn't take this square, it isolates a domino there. And we mustn't isolate dominoes, we must isolate pentominoes. So this becomes a Y pentomino. This now has to get out, which fixes the P pentominoes orientation. This has to extend again because it can't go take that square. Ah, but now it could be a, a U or an L, believe it or not. Good grief. Okay, but now up here, therefore, we've got those three squares in the same pentomino. Let's make that green. It must take this square. It now can't take this one. So this is I ah, and it, ah, it can't take that one. It can't take that one because that would force a Y pentomino, which is next to another Y pentomino. So this is an F pentomino. This square now must take those positions. Can't be a W. Can't take that square, so that becomes an N pentomino. My goodness, I mean, imagine constructing this. Ah, but this, this is beautiful, look. This N pentomino now has told us about this red region. If we try and make this a U pentomino, it isolates uh, a triomino there, which is again not going to work. So this must be, this must be an L. This oh, this region now only has one exit, so this is a p pentomino. Does that? 
this region now, those three squares must be the same. And we've got to be a bit careful that we've got an X pentomino there, so we can't do that with this one. So maybe here, is this where we're meant to look? So we've got a domino there and we've got a domino here that are sort of... So a good question we could ask is, are these dominoes connected? No, they're not. They're not connected. Let's connect them and let me show you why. If I connect these dominoes together and get a four cell tetromino, how do we complete this with a one more square? Well, I could put a T by making that one, but that connects to the gray T, or I could take that one and that's an F and it's connected to the green F. So this has to be a different, this is huge. This has to be a different pentomino to this, which means that squares. That's turning left now. It can't come down on itself because of the border. So that's got to go there. This has got to go here. So, so this is forced to be an L pentomino. So this now can't turn up because it would be an L pentomino. That is an I pentomino. These three squares now have to be the same pent in the same pentomino. And they therefore have to join with this domino. Otherwise we would have an isolation of this domino's pentomino. I've said omino a lot in this video. For that, I apologise mildly. Um, these three squares are the same now. Oh, and this can't be an L because that would be hitting that L. So this is an N. Let's make that, uh, what colour? Green. I think green is okay. This is another of these P pentominoes that must, is forced by the two by two region with only one exit. These squares now have to be the same. And, oh, and this is forced as well by this pentomino because this is an N. I can't therefore make this an N. It can't turn back on itself there. So its fifth square has to be a W. So I make that purple. These squares now can't be an N. So this has to be an L. We're doing okay here. This must be a P by the logic we've discussed at length in this video. I make that purple. This now must be, can't be an L because it would connect to this. This is a, another U pentomino. We haven't had a U for a while. Um, I will make the U green. These squares now have to join the other gray. Uh, okay, so this is either, this could be a no, it can't be a T because of this T. So it's not taking that square. So it must take that one and be a Y. And we're closing in, aren't we? We're, I'm nearly there. It's a longer video than I anticipated though. This is going to take about six months to upload at my Wi-Fi speed where I am at the moment. Um, okay, so these squares and this square are part of the same pentomino. Let's highlight that somehow. We can make those purple. These three squares are part of the same pentomino. We'll make those green. This square is interesting. What happens if this square is not part of this purple region? Let's, let's just highlight it in black. So now I've got to fill this purple region somehow, but it can't take this square. It can take that one, but then it would have to form this arrangement, which would be a U pentomino. Oh. Ah, in fact, this is correct, isn't it? I didn't see that this could be an F pentomino, but it can be. So in fact, I think a better question would be, can this be purple? If this is purple, if this is purple, now it can't take this square, but it could be a W. Oh, 
Hmm, actually, I'm a bit stuck here. I'm not sure what I'm meant to do with this. Is this U attaching to... If it was a U, is it attaching to anything? No. Is the F attaching to anything? No. Or maybe, maybe there's a problem down here, actually. Let's have a look down here, because I've got to avoid... Yeah, one thing I've got to avoid is attaching an X to an X. So maybe that's a better way of thinking about this. Oh, yes, I think this is a better way of thinking about it. So if this square is purple, it what where does it then go? Where does it then go? Now it can't take this square. And this is the key. This is the key. It can't take this square because if it takes this square, it's an n attaching to an n. So if it can't take this square, the only thing that can take this square is going to be this region down here. Um, because otherwise, it's going to, if, if this doesn't take it, this square will just be isolated. We know it's not isolated, so I've got to take this square with the green. Now what do I do? I can't isolate this square. So this square has to be part of a pentomino, and the only pentomino it can be part of is the green. And that's going to connect two x pentominoes together so that is really difficult but i think it shows this square in fact is definitely not purple which means the only way the purple region can develop is like that which fixes the green as an f and now presumably I just have to be a bit careful about what this region does now. So if this region can't be an X, if it can't, it can't be an X, if it's a, an F like that, the, there would be two, you can see the U would be four, let me show you. This would be forced to be a U and it would attach to this U here. So that does not work. So this can't be an F like this. It can't be an F like that because that will isolate this square. It can't be an X. So it, the only option is that this is a Y, I think. Now this has to be a P pentomino. We've looked at the logic behind that many times. And we're left with a 10 cell region now to finish the puzzle off. How do we do this without breaking it? So these have to be the same. Ah, and we're going I see what's going to happen here. We're going to have to make sure we don't attach a P to a P. So this square must not be part of a P pentomino. So it looks, I think it's going to have to be that and then a P pentomino on top of it. But let's just double check that. If this comes up, that creates a, a P which touches. That's no good. That creates a P that touches. This creates a P that touches. Everything creates a P that touches this, except for this region. Lovely, what a finish. That's such a plum. Um, I'll make that black just to sort of stand out. That was the last uh, the last pentomino we got to place. So yeah, as I say, that video is going to take a, a great deal of time to upload, but I hope you enjoyed watching it. Let me know in the comments and let me know how you found the puzzle and whether you want to see more pentominous puzzles on Cracking the Cryptic. And we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic. Cracking the Cryptic being said many times over and over again, but not as many times as Omino.